And welcome to today's session. We're going to look at the use of technology in data collection today. So it's an A-level PE topic, particularly for AQA in sport and society. So these two companies, Opta and Prozone, I wonder if you know anything about those. Have a quick think if you've heard those two names before. So Opta is a statistical company and they work with sports, leagues, such as the Premier League, and in each game, they will collect as much data as possible. They'll look at player stats, such as passes completed, passes incompleted, how far they've dribbled, how long they've had the ball. So they've got lots of people at each ground recording, tabulating all of that data and putting it out there live, particularly for the fans, but also for the football teams. And then Prozo is a GPS tracking system which tracks where the players go on the field, where they go on the field when they touch the ball or when they've got the ball, where they go when they haven't got the ball, when, they got the, when they're defending, how far they travel. So Prozone gives them all of that data. So this falls under the sports analytics part. And sports analytics is the analysis of sports data using analytical tools and methods for data to be subjected to analytical procedures in order to try to improve results. So that Opta and Prozone, they're part of this sports analytics. They're collecting data and sports teams are bound to have input into what kind of data they want collected on their players. Sports analytics is now a huge growth area. So part of it is in collecting raw data that happens during the games and then using that data for prediction. So what players should do in the future based on their past stats, what you should do against another team based on their statistics. And this is all about performers and coaches getting that extra 1% advantage over an opponent or improving themselves that extra 1%. Quantitative research. Okay. Now, quantitative research is fact-based research. You're, they're trying to collect facts. So Opta and Prozone will be quantitative research. They're picking up factual numerical data, and we call that quantitative data. It always has a number or a value to it, and it's factual. It is quite narrow in focus, though. You might focus on one part of the play. So you might focus on number of passes completed. Now, that player might have 100%. Does that mean they've had a good game, though? Do we need to look at what kind of passes they made? So quantitative data will give us a hard fact, but it won't necessarily tell us what happened in their true performance. So OptoStats, Prozone, they collect that data. They give that to the teams and the players and also the fans. So I've got a little example to work through here. So we've got two centre forwards, both play for the same team. And the coach wanted to analyse over the season, in preparation for the next season, where they should shoot from. Okay, now player X and player Y both had 75% of their shots in the penalty area and 25% of their shots outside the penalty area. Now player Y had less shots overall than player X. Now if we look Let's look at the first one, the biggest difference. Let's look at shots from outside the box. Now, player Y only had 18 shots from outside the box, but scored 30% of those shots. That's a really good uh, ratio to score from. Compared to player X, now that guy had 27 shots, but only scored two goals, and that's 8%. So what the coach is going to look at and say, right, Player Y for a start, have more shots, but particularly have more shots from outside the area because you're obviously really accurate, you're hitting them hard, they're hard to save. So he'll be encouraging player Y to have more shots from outside the box. Now player X is going to say the opposite to He's going to say, right, we need you in the box. We don't want you taking shots from outside the box. We want you in the area. So you, when you attack from inside the area, you're really effective. So that's the kind of uh, quantitative data that will inform players and coaches on maybe tactics going forward. Now, the next type of research and data is called qualitative. 
quality f- focuses on words and feelings and opinions on something. It's not about hard physical numbers. Now, it might ha- involve numbers. For example, how did you feel during the game out of five? Okay, a number's involved, but it's still about how you felt. And what it does is it collects data based on questionnaires and interviewing the performers on parts of the game, how they felt it went, how they felt before the game, how they felt in the first half compared to the second half. So they're trying to get a feeling of those players. It often focuses on the performer's feelings, their levels of anxiety, so they can kind of sit, ask a player how stressed they felt before, during and after. They can sort of help a player manage that stress by understanding you have really high levels of anxiety before the performance. But as the performance went on, you were doing so well that your levels of anxiety went down. So you don't need to worry in the future as much because those performances always come right for you. It's less precise because it's based on how people are feeling and less experienced performers can give you really kind of vague responses and it can be a bit open ended. The focus can be really wide so you can get a whole picture view of a performance, but it can be a bit vague and it's very time consuming to collect all of that data. So objective data. Now, objective data is very similar to quantitative data. Uh, It's fact based, it's measurable and it's observable. So you have an objective that you want to test. Okay, so you want to find the data for a certain objective and you go about devising a test or data fields that are going to give you that result. Very good for decision making and giving feedback to the performer. So a, a, a netball shooter could find out their ideal distance to take shots from. So where's their percentage best from? At what is the furthest distance where their percentage really drops off? So that's going to give them a really good objective data. Gives a performer a specific goal to focus on. So they can really focus on one thing or one part of their game to kind of work on. Subjective data. Now this is a bit more like qualitative data. Subjective means it's about opinion. If we have a subjective opinion, you might have one opinion, somebody else might have another. It could be argued. And so subjective data isn't really rock solid data. And it can be flawed because emotions come into this, bias comes into this, your preconceptions of someone come into this. So if you're watching your favourite player play and you're analysing them, you might be bias because you've seen them play better before and then that bias comes into that performance you might not give an honest view of how they played it's not giving feedback based on fact but more about opinion so how someone played so your coach might tell you at half time how they think you're playing but there's no statistical data for that that's really how the coach felt you were playing similar to quality of data so validity of data collection okay So refers to the degree to which the data collected actually measures what it claims to measure. So what you're trying to do, does the data field or the test meet that? So, for example, you'll have done something like the 12 minute Cooper test or the multi-stage fitness test, bleep test. Now, you did those because you wanted to find out the level of cardiovascular fitness. So that's quite a valid test because You want to find out a certain thing, and that's a good test for that. Okay, the coach is assessing player X attacking midfield in hockey on their passing. Now, which one is the best? Okay, is completed pass percentage the best thing they're going to look at? Is completed pass percentage that go over 10 metres, is that better? Is the number of passes that led to a shot on goal? Is that a good statistic for that player? So the coach has got to think of exactly what the role of that player is. What do they, what do they want from that player? So they've got to find the data field, the type of data they want to collect in that player that tells them exactly how that player is paying. So it does become really kind of tricky, but it helps keep it really focused. And then reliability of data is the last part. So... Reliability of data refers to the degree to which the data collection is consistent and stable over time. So 
Could this data be collected by different people and the same results are there? So if I collected the data in that moment and somebody else did, we should get exactly the same data. If someone's running a fitness test, they've got to run the correct protocols and therefore they would assess the person exactly the same. That makes it a really reliable set of data. This reliability can be affected by errors in collecting data if the wrong equipment's used or if protocols aren't followed correctly by each of the testers. If someone decides to do the test slightly differently, you would get a different set of data. In the press up test, for example, if someone didn't uh, allow someone to go all the way down and up, we'd start to see differences in the amount of press ups they'd done. If the data collected is not valid, then it will not be reliable. So we talked about it needs to be a valid focus. So if we haven't got a valid focus, it's not going to be reliable. We're not going to get the information we need to give really good feedback. And it's not going to be focused. So if we use the wrong test or data field, we're wasting our time in the feedback we give to our performer. Thanks for watching this. Uh, there'll be more on technology to come and good luck.